So check this out. We just built an AI tools directory. So it's literally got hundreds and soon thousands of the coolest and hottest AI tools all in one place. And we built this and launched it in just a couple days. All of this was built with just four tools, Webflow, Airtable, WhaleSync, and a little bit of Google Sheets. But basically a couple of spreadsheets plus Webflow and WhaleSync, and we have a true directory that is beautiful, that is filled with tons of information, and that we are really excited to be launching. Now in this video, I'll show you how you can launch your own directory website, how you can collect thousands of pieces of information for whatever it is that you are trying to collect, and how you can build it all with AI, all with NoCo tools, um, and again, all in a couple hours here. Personally, I think it's pretty sweet. Uh, so let me show you how you can do it yourself. So Webflow is the website builder we're using for the front end. It's where we're designing these pages. It's ultimately where we're publishing the website from. This is where sort of everything you see ultimately lives. Airtable is the back end, right? So Airtable is where we actually are going to be collecting our thousand plus tools. Airtable is awesome because it lets you basically just collect things in a big list, categorize them as much as you want, use filtering and sorts. It is perfect for building a directory tool. Now, WhaleSync lives right in between. It basically connects our Webflow site to our Airtable backend. So you can think of, again, Webflow is where we're displaying all these tools. Airtable is where we are collecting them. We need some way to make them talk. WhaleSync is the bridge between those two. So literally, you just click a couple buttons and all the tools that we collect in Airtable instantly just show up in Webflow. To write descriptions and collect images and categorize a thousand different AI tools would have taken forever. So we are using the intelligence of Airtable AI to write descriptions and categorizations for us. There's a bit of a manual step here and I'll show you how to do it. But essentially, as we put more and more of these tools into our Airtable database, the AI can give a nice description that quickly and succinctly tells our users what this AI tool is about. And it can categorize it into a specific role like this is a sales tool or this is a marketing tool. Again, doing this by hand would have been a huge pain in the neck. With AI, this became really, really manageable. And the high level last bit here is Google Sheets. Google Sheets has something called XML imports where you can have it go and scrape websites for you. And so in order for our Airtable AI to be able to write good descriptions about each of these AI tools, we needed to give it something to write a description about. And that's where Google Sheets came in. It basically let us scrape the different web pages of these AI tools so that our AI could write the descriptions for us. All right, so you got a good understanding of how this all fits together. Let's get into the step-by-step -step so you can build this yourself. Let's start with the Webflow side of things. So to build out our directory, the first thing you wanna do is come into Webflow, open up this little page button and click this create new page. And you're gonna create one just like this. So this is called AI directory, but all the steps are here, page, new page, name it wherever you want. Now this of course will be empty when you start, but that's okay. We're gonna fill this in and we'll design it later. And again, this video really isn't about how to use Webflow or how to make something look pretty in Webflow. It's just about how to structure things so you can build a directory. Once you have a page, you now have a place you can start to put each of these tools. Uh, of course though, with any directory type website, we're not gonna to wanna to just do this one off. We want it to be something that is scalable that we can eventually edit and work with over time. And so that's where the Webflow CMS comes in. So if you wanna use the CMS, you're gonna come up here, click CMS, and again, create a new collection uh, in this case, it's called AI tools. For you, it might be something else, whatever your directory is about. But this collection is where we are ultimately going to store all of our different tools. And if you open this up and let's go into settings, you'll see a couple of the key fields here. So name and slug are two of the fields that obviously come out of the box. But some of the ones that you might want for your directory as well are things like description, where we will eventually populate our description, a website link, and an image. You can pretty much start there. Um, for us, we wanted to be able to categorize stuff. So we also had role and tag. We created two different collections here. So AI roles is where we collected, whether it's a design tool or an HR tool, AI tags, where we tagged it with things like cloud computing or APIs. Uh, but each of those are related back using reference fields in Webflow so that for each new tool that we add, we can include descriptions, roles, and tags, right? Um, what you might want to do at this point is just create a couple of fake tools uh, Webflow actually has an AI feature that'll create a couple dummy values for you, but you're now really set up. This is what's pretty amazing is you now have the infrastructure on the Webflow side to be able to do this. So once you've created a couple of these, you want to go back to your page here so we can close the CMS. And what you're going to want to do is, of course, let's open up the CMS uh, page uh, navigator here. We're going to want to create a collection list and plop it here, right? So we'll use this little plus button here and scroll down and hit collection list, that is going to let us display the things in our 
AI tools collection. And you'll notice in here that this is set to be a collection list of AI tools, right? So that's not really the key. You've kind of set up the front end here. Now let's talk a little bit about the back end. So Airtable, like we talked about, is the place where we're going to collect all of our different AI tools. So we're going to want one row for every single tool that we want to list on our website, right? And that's going to be the same as every single tool that eventually lives in our Webflow CMS. Now to set this up again at a very basic level, we're going to want to mirror our collection and Webflow in Airtable. So we had a tools CMS collection. I'll show it to you again here, AI tools, name slug, popular description is fields. You'll notice in Airtable, I've got the same exact thing. Tools table, name, URL, description, role tags, right? All the same things that are gonna ultimately end up in Webflow. Same idea for roles and tags. We have collections in Webflow, we've got tables in Airtable. We are all set up. Now we have a place where as we discover new AI tools, we can just pop them in here. So this was literally the first one that I came across was Ask Concierge, then Pickle, then Airtop. If you click on one of these, you'll see they're really cool AI tools. And I just started to collect them, just throw them into Airtable. And the idea was, hey, we can throw them in here with the name and the URL and later come back and add things like their roles, their tags, and their description. So that's really what I would say is like, just start collecting whatever your director is, start to fill it up in Airtable uh, and have at least the name of it and the URL. Once you've done that, you can start to add descriptions. So what I'd recommend is just writing out whatever your descriptions are by hand to start. So AI assistant that connects with your apps, great, whatever again your version is, just write them out so you can start to see what they look like on this side of things. Towards the end of this video, I'll show you how we can start to use AI to write the descriptions for us, but that's not really important yet. Let's just get the basic structure going. Now, what is worth thinking about right now are the images. So if you go to our site again and we close the CMS, you'll see that for each of our AI tools, we've got this really cool image that is just a screenshot from the website. Images are a really cool way to make your directory feel a lot more real. And so what I'd recommend is actually starting with those from the beginning. So in Airtable, you're going to want to create a field that is a attachment field. This is where you can store images. And again, just to get things going, you can start to take some screenshots just so this doesn't get in the way of things. But as soon as you want to make this professional and actually ready for your site, you're going to use something called an Airtable extension. So Airtable extensions let you take the power of Airtable up to the next level by basically letting you connect it to outside features and tools. And so if you click extensions over here, you'll notice we've got one called Web Clipper. So this Web Clipper extension is basically a Chrome app. Uh, so basically what this little extension will do when you download it from the Chrome store is let you go to a site like this one, click on that Chrome extension, and it will automatically clip that and pop it right here. But that's really it. That is the basics of this backend. This is how Airtable is set up. I can now just do the work of finding the tools that I want to be included in my directory and starting to see how even just by popping them in here, putting a URL and having my web clipper, it becomes manageable that in an hour or two, I could collect, you know, a couple hundred of these. Okay, so now we've got our Airtable backend filled up with a handful of these AI tools. We've got our web front frontend that is now set up with a collection, so it's ready to receive these AI tools. The next step is to actually connect them. And so here's where Wilson comes in. We're going to basically just hook up Airtable to Webflow so that whenever we add a new AI tool, it just automatically syncs over. And we can basically use Airtable to edit and control our website without even having to open up Webflow again. So to do that, let's hop into WhaleSync and I'll show you how this is all set up. So to go set this up, you'd basically create a new sync. You'd pick uh, Webflow as one of your apps, hit authorize, and we're gonna wanna search for that AI tools uh, site. For us, it's in our WhaleSync project. Uh, so it's WhaleSync 2024 and authorize that app. From there, we are going to want to do the same thing with Airtable. And this one is called something like AI tools as well. So I can hit add a base, AI tools, there we go. Boom, grant access. And we're now connected there too. Once we've connected our two apps, we can hit continue and add table mappings. So this is where we connect the actual tables and fields. And as you might've guessed, we're gonna wanna connect the one called AI tools to our table called tools and create that table mapping. Because we've already created the same fields across both, we can just auto map them. And now you can see this is all set up for us. So we've got our name field mapped to our name field, our description to our description, all two-way synced. So as we add new tools into Airtable, they're just gonna sync into Webflow. If someone on the 
marketing team goes into Webflow and updates a tool that'll sync back into Airtable. All this is taken care of for us. The last step here is adding the relation fields. So in order to sync that field we mentioned, like role and tag, you'll see this little squiggly line, basically means that it's relating to another collection or table. All we have to do is hit new table mapping, go through that same process. Instead of doing AI tools, we'll do AI roles. We'll map that to roles, hit create new table mapping. This time when we map all these fields together, this will now allow us to come back in here, add this little role, map it to role, and there we go. Now the hard part of syncing a relation field is basically taken care of for us. We also think we'll just sync this like every other field. Once that's set up, we can just hit save and continue. We can go through the rest of these steps. We're basically just turn this on, the sync will be set up. And from there on out, Webflow and Airtable are connected. You're good to go. All right, so again, let's just quickly take stock of what we've built so far. So we have the front end of a Webflow site for our directory. Again, it might not look exactly like this, but you have a page, you've got CMS collections, you've got a place where you can start to populate items directly on your page. You also have an Airtable backend. So you now have a collection of at least a handful of tools or whatever your directory items are in a spot where you can add to them, you can write descriptions, you can add images, anything you want, it's all in this place. You have an ability to scrape images using Airtable's Web Clipper to automatically take an image from a screenshot and pop it into your Airtable so you can have items that look really nice. And you've got WhaleSync set up to connect Airtable and Webflow so that all this data is just syncing across so that as you collect more of your items in Airtable, they just sync automatically onto your Webflow site. So first of all, be really proud of what you built so far. This is like 90% of the work is you've just built the infrastructure of an actual directory. And if your directory only has like 50 or 100 items in it, you're pretty much good to go. Like I wouldn't even recommend messing around with AI at this point. If there's 50 or 100, just sort of knock them out manually and focus on building out the rest of your site. But the rest of this video, we'll talk about how to use AI to speed up the process if like us, you're building a directory that has a thousand or 2000 or more different items. Now, the first thing you'll notice takes a long time, at least for us, was writing into these descriptions. So it was fairly easy to find and collect a bunch of different AI tools and just write their name and their URL. But as soon as you have to think about, okay, what is this? Uh, how do I describe this? Uh, it can be annoying and, and take a lot of time. And so we used AI to speed that up tremendously. Now, our first stab at this was just to ask AI to write uh, a short description of each of these tools. And at least for us, what we found was this was really inaccurate. So you can see like some of these things, take this one, just build things. The description that our AI wrote was just build things. Not helpful at all. Uh, and so the way to get around that is to be very tailored about what you're feeding to the AI so it can actually do a good job. Now to build an AI field in general, you're gonna want to come into Airtable and hit this little plus button, click on this AI button to create a new AI field. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I already have one here, so I'll scroll over, but you'll see it'll look something like this with this little star, right? These ones over here. And this is where we can give our AI instructions. So in this case, what I've told it is to take the name of this company and write a description of it that is less than 100 characters. So all of these are all short. And again, this is where we kind of ran into some problems. So instead, what we decided to do was to give it some information it could work from. So here are the inputs we gave it, which is a website title, a website name, an H1, and the URL. So again, let's just take an example. Um, here, this one's called Marco. We gave it the name uh, of, or rather the title of the site, the actual description from it, and the H1, smarter search, higher conversion. If we were to go open this up, just so you could see it, it sees this, this is what it's grabbing, right? Smarter search, and then this little description here. Now with that, our Airtable AI can actually write a description that makes sense. Uh, and so this was really, really key. Now, of course, copying and pasting the actual H1s and descriptions into our Airtable one at a time would probably have taken just as much time as writing a description on our own. So that clearly wasn't gonna work. So we needed a bit of automation to do that last bit. How could we automatically pull this in to feed the AI? And this is where Google Sheets comes in. So you're probably familiar with Google Sheets, or I would almost bet that you're familiar with Google Sheets, uh, but what you might not know is it has a feature called import XML that will let your Google Sheet go look at a URL and pull things like the title description in H1 for you. Um, so this was a surprise for me. I didn't even realize Google Sheets could do this, uh, but it is a lifesaver for this specific use case. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, I'll link to this in the show notes, but basically there's a whole doc on how to set up import XML. 
If you're curious though, it's really just this. It's equals index, and then you're gonna call import XML and give it exactly what you want it to go and scrape. Um, but that's really it. So to use import XML, all you have to do is create a spreadsheet like this, where you have URLs in column A, title, description, and H1 in the next few columns. And you go ahead and pop in a few of these URLs. So let's do, let's say like superbase.com and pop that in here. Now, when I drag this formula down, it will just run and there we go. It, boom, it's got the title, the description, the H1. So you basically get the idea. Uh, what we went ahead and did was grabbed a bunch of these URLs for new AI tools. We popped them into our XML powered spreadsheet. It spit out a title, description, and H1. And then we brought that over into our Airtable here into title, description, and H1 so that we could feed it into our Airtable AI as a way to make these descriptions better. And so now we ended up, if we go to our actual website uh, listings, these descriptions are all written for us, right? Like these are really good ones. Like Alex is the cursor for Xcode um, or Clips AI is a tool for repurposing videos for developers. That is a really useful description. And it was only possible because it's coming directly from their site with AI just sort of reformatting it into the description that we wanted. Now, the other place we really needed AI's help was for categorizing all of these tools. When you collect a thousand different AI tools, it's hard to think about what role or what tag or how, like, how do you even group these? Um, and so, of course, again, with 10 tools or 100, you could probably do this manually. Uh, with 1,000 or 10,000, this gets really, really nuts. So what we did was, again, used a very similar process where uh, if we go to this sort of uh, staging view here, we basically wanted uh, our AI to take a look at uh, all the different options for roles, so things like sales, marketing, customer support, engineering, and just to determine it for us, right? Um, based on these two fields. So look at the name, look at the description and decide, is this a sales tool, a marketing tool, or a support tool? And the reason this works is because we used AI before. Um, the description field is now something that's actually accurate for the app. And so when we have this AI role look at description, it's looking at something that's useful. It can make a pretty good determination of sales, marketing, and support. To be fully transparent, I would say this is accurate maybe like 90% of the time. So it still took like an hour or two of reviewing these just to make sure they were all correct. Uh, but way, way faster to review and take a quick look and change just a couple as opposed to doing this all by hand. So that's how we built the AI tools directory. I hope you got a sense of how you can build whatever directory you want with these exact same steps. Webflow, Airtable, WhaleSync, a little bit of Airtable AI. It can go really, really far. And again, it's just really mind blowing how fast this all came together. Because of these no-code tools and AI, it is now pretty much trivial to build a directory site that is really, really sweet. Uh, so we hope you build something really cool. If you build a directory site with the same tools, throw it in the comments. We'd love to see. Uh, it is super, super awesome to see other people building just like killer, killer directories. Um, and if you have any questions about any of the details on this, uh, leave them in the comments below as well. We're happy to go even deeper on any step, whether it's Webflow, Airtable, WhaleSync, whatever else, uh, to help make this really, really easy for you.